Before we get into today's show, let me tell you about HubSpot. If you're hustling in the trenches to build a business or bootstrapping one of your own, let's talk about an AI-powered tool that can lighten up your workload a bit. HubSpot's campaign assistant is a game changer for creating marketing campaigns at scale. It quickly turns your key selling points into a cohesive pitch, which helps you deliver knockout emails, ads, and landing pages in minutes. So let Campaign Assistant take care of the campaigns so you can get back to growing your business. Work smarter, not harder at HubSpot.com slash campaign dash assistant. Howdy, folks. It is Monday, May 1st. I'm Jacob Cohen, and you are listening to The Hustle Daily Show. So I don't know about you, but it feels like everywhere I look, I'm seeing ads for new sports betting platforms or old ones too. Or maybe you're like me and you also have roommates that bet on sports as if their lives depended on it. Whatever the case, this space is becoming more and more crowded and these online sports books are now working harder than ever to try and move the odds in their favor for the sporty version of a high stakes arms race. We'll get into this, but before we do, let's take a quick look at what else is going on in the world of business and tech, let's get crack lacking. Okay, first things first. Today I in AI, Chad GPT maker OpenAI has some new backers pouring $300 million into the company at a valuation reported to be somewhere between $27 and $29 billion. The backers include a who's who of venture firms, including Tiger Global, Sequoia Capital, and Dreesen Horowitz Thrive, K2 Global, and Founders Fund, according to TechCrunch, this all reportedly is separate from Microsoft's $10 billion or so investment announced earlier this year. And this AI stuff is clearly making a case for itself, you could say, because get this, legal AI startup Harvey recently raised $21 million in funding to help lawyers make their billable hours a bit more efficient, I guess you could say a bite more efficient. Using the same kind of tech behind ChatGPT, the company reportedly already has more than 15,000 law firms on its waiting list and will be used by thousands of lawyers at prestigious firms like Allen & Overy and PwC. Moving along, snap out of it, snap out of it. Snapchat parent Snap is having a rough go of it after reporting declining revenue late last week in a stock that's now down 70% or so year over year made worse by one analyst absolutely roasting them, saying, what do you call a growth company with no growth? According to Snap, 3 million users are now paying for the company's premium service, which is on track to make more than $100 million annually. But the truth of the matter is that ads are where the bulk of the business is for this company, and that side of the business has been squeezed hard. CEO Evan Spiegel says the company is using this as an opportunity to make significant improvements to its ad platform to drive increased return for its ad partners. And snaps to that, snaps to that, love a good plan for a turnaround and hope it comes together for them. Let's keep it moving along. So there's the Breakfast Club and then there's the Broke Fast Club. And we recently wrote about and hailed social audio app Clubhouse as technically still alive. And while that continues to be very much true, there's now been another interesting kind of bleak, kind of unusual turn. So despite what its founders call having years of runway or basically money in the bank remaining and no immediate pressure to reduce costs, the app has laid off half of its employees as it looks to pivot its product and improve efficiency. I love that. Pivot its product. Pivot its product. Anyway, it's a great app, great concept, but that's exactly the problem it's faced because the truth of the matter is the app has been copied and pasted as just another feature by bigger social platforms on their own apps. And despite having raised $110 million in funding and notching a $4 billion valuation, if Clubhouse does not land a critical strategic jump, its future may be called into question sooner rather than later. And speaking of Clubhouse, one company who reportedly once considered buying it outright, Twitter, was experiencing some Twitter blues over the weekend. Twitter's founder and ex-CEO Jack Dorsey, who, who once said Elon, or in terms of Elon Musk, is the singular solution he trusts to take the company to the promised land, now agrees it's quote-unquote pretty sad how things have shaken out with his former platform. Dorsey 
added further criticism of Musk's leadership. And by the way, this all happened on Blue Sky, which is a Twitter rival that Dorsey has backed since 2019. In other news, are we calling this a package deal? Zipline's latest funding round values the drone delivery startup at around $4.2 billion. Its newest autonomous courier drone can travel up to 70 miles per hour, has a 10-mile range, and can carry eight pounds of cargo. Very cool stuff. And are we calling this a gut check? Olipop says its prebiotic soda is on track to hit $200 million in sales this year with CEO Ben Goodwin claiming he's turned down buyout offers from Coca-Cola and PepsiCo, according to CNBC. Also, since it wasn't already cool enough that Ikea sells more than 1 billion meatballs a year and would rank as one of the 50 highest grossing food chains in the world right above IHOP, the company is now working magic with cost cuts, according to the Wall Street Journal. In one instance, new designs for its Billy bookcase, which sells 6.3 million units a year, one every five seconds, reduced its price 29%. Another redesign for the Flinton chair now enables IKEA to fit 6,900 units of the chair into one shipping container up from 2,750 beforehand. And lastly, let's keep sticking them up. Retailer Big Lots is copying the container stores gimmick, now accepting 20% off coupons from bygone competitor Bed Bath & Beyond in its own store. And to that, we say, let's keep this going, folks. Airlines, car dealers, jump on in. We'll take the discounts wherever we can get them. Let's go. And with that, let's get to today's main story. Okay, so you may have missed Saturday's XFL semifinal between the Arlington Renegades and the Houston Roughnecks. It's also possible you may be surprised to learn that such teams even exist. But what should probably be surprising you less and less is that a lot of money changed hands with the Renegades' upset win. After all, this decade has seen win after win after win for the sports betting industry. Online sports gambling is now legal in 33 U.S. states with more expected to follow, and sportsbooks generated more than $5.8 billion in revenue last year, escalating a bookie arms race and enticing others to get in the game. So who are some of these key players and what makes their game plans so interesting? Well, in one corner, we've got DraftKings, used by nearly half of bettors, according to Variety, and the company hopes to widen its lead on the field by expanding its media operations specifically. DraftKings' latest move was launching its own streaming video service with its own sports video podcasts, and this follows partnerships with iHeartRadio and SB Nation and a spending spree on prominent hosts for its podcast network. And in the other corner, we've got FanDuel. DraftKings moves actually follow a media blitz from FanDuel itself, which is the second largest sports book in this field. Last year, FanDuel rebranded cable network TVG, which was previously dedicated to horse racing, as FanDuel TV. And this month, it inked a deal with another media partner, The Ringer, to help expand original programming. But there are also others hoping to get further into the ring. Third place bookie MGM is also making deals, just having expanded its Buffalo Wild Wings partnership. And as the industry waits for the biggest media chip to fall, ESPN, which has not really solidified its betting strategy outright just yet, another player has emerged. And that would be sports merchandise titan Fanatics, who now plans to bet or uh, uh, invest a billion dollars into building its own sports betting division. Now, what's so interesting about Fanatics is its strategy as a merchandiser. Fanatics knows it's showing up late to the party, but it thinks that as other sports books spend big on acquiring customers, its own database of some 95 million existing merchandise customers worldwide offers a huge advantage in both attracting, affording, retaining, and profiting off users. And the company will use its existing relationships to connect gamblers to its merchandise and collectible programs. It's a flywheel for the ages, potentially, and the business unit is actually funny enough, led by Matt King, who's FanDuel's former CEO. Now, Fanatics has a $31 billion valuation, up from $18 billion in 2021, and will handle 62 million orders this year, according to the Wall Street Journal. Though some are skeptical of the company's database and question how many people who've 
let's say, bought a sports jersey or hat on its site, would actually want to use the site to also gamble. Fanatics thinks that's okay, since their cost to acquire a user may be so much lower than the competition. And not only that, but they're also hopeful that over time, as their platform adds features like potentially watching live sports or buying tickets, it could become the top sports betting company in the world in 10 years' time, they hope. Now, whatever happens, the jockeying in this space is only going to intensify with sports betting projected by some to generate more than $180 billion annually by 2030, which, let's be honest, is a number calculated before every hustle reader became a rabid, put their savings on the line for each game, Arlington Renegades fame. All right, and bada bing, bada boom. That's going to do it for us today, folks. Thanks for tuning in to the Hustle Daily Show. We're a proud part of the HubSpot Podcast Network. Our editor today is... Ezra Trupiano, our executive producer, is Darren Clark. We've got a lot more tech and business coverage in our newsletter. Folks, if you're not signed up for it, you really should go do that at thehustle.co slash email. Hope you have an awesome Monday. Let's have a great week. We'll catch you tomorrow. Hey, guys. If you listen to The Hustle Daily Show on Google Podcasts, we want to let you know that the option will no longer be available pretty soon. Google is sunsetting its podcast app sometime in early 2024 in favor of YouTube Music, and we want to give you a heads up before it's too late since that time's almost here. The Hustle Daily Show is available everywhere and anywhere that you listen to podcasts like Apple Podcasts and Spotify. If you're using YouTube Music, we are there as well. If you're an Android fan, there are plenty of apps like Overcast, Pocket Casts, Player FM, and more. So just search for us wherever you decide to listen to your favorite podcasts.